Hey, what's going on guys? Anyways, we're here and I'm going to show you why shooting raw is so important and it's something I learned the hard way. So let's just waste no time and jump right on into it. So let's go open uh, Lightroom 5 and go look at what we got. Um, this is a picture I took at the Blues and Brews Festival down in Fa Reno, Nevada. And as you can see, I've made a virtual copy of it already. So first things first, we're just going to hop on the copy and we're just going to edit it real quick. You see I'm over underexposed greatly, so we're just going to open this up. Uh, we're going to open up about 3.5%, 3.5 stops. Uh, I've already done this, so don't mind me if I just run through it real quick. We're going to open it up until we get some definition in the sky and the clouds again. We're going to go ahead and bring back some by lowering down the sh highlights. I want that building to come out because I like the building. I liked it a lot, so we're going to go up to about 90-ish whites. We're going to hit Option key on a Mac, we're going to slide over until we start seeing some pixels come out. And at that point, we're going to stop. We're going to go down into the blacks, do the same thing. Option key, come down until you get some definition. Stop right there. Clarity, we're going to pump it up up to the high 20s, mid 20s. And we're going to go down to the vibrance. I like, I like blues. I like the clouds. I like the colors to pop out a little more. So uh, ideally, I thought this was going to be like an HDR photo. And I'm trying to go for that. I'm not going to touch the saturation. But I noticed one thing. We're already not having the same on both sides. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to rotate for, until you know you think you got about the same showing. And then I'm going to bring this side in to try and match the other side. So I think we're about even. We're just going to hit option. That's about it. It's close enough. I'm not going to be perfectionist here, but you know, it levels things out and make it more, you know, even on both sides. We're going to come a little bit more. So once that's done, we're going to go ahead and we're going to strap down to the noise reduction tool because as you see, we opened it up a lot and we brought in a lot of noise. So we're going to go up to the noise and I think we're going to go up to about 40 ish. Which noise reduction does is we soften the image. We're blending everything together. We're taking the noise out, but we're in, we're making it not as sharp. So how do you counteract that? You go for the sharpening tool. You go ahead. I usually start off around 50s, and that's going to introduce more sharpness on the whole picture as a whole. But we want to make everything sharp where we want it. Like we don't want the sky sharp. We don't want everything that we do doesn't need to be sharpened. So we're going to hit the Option key again on the Mac. That masks it and you can see where you're putting it. So right here, as you see, beginning, all that's getting sh sharpened, and we don't want that. We just want what we want sharpened. So we're gonna go down until we can see black. Black means it's not getting sharpened. So we're gonna head and leave it right there. So now the sky is not gonna get sharpened. Parts of the bricks are not gonna get sharpened, just the corners of the brick, and that's what we want. We want that sharpness to come back. We reduce it in luminance or lum luminosity or whatever and noise reduction and now we're bringing it back. So with that being dead we go down to enable profile connection, remove chromatic aberrations if there is any <clears throat> and keep on going down. Uh, when you do all that you get rid of the post crop vignette. I like that so we're just going to add a little bit more back into it so we have some def you know center point to look at where are we looking at. And I think we can brighten up a list a little bit more, but I don't really want to do take the whole picture up. So what we're going to do is we're just going to go up here to the paintbrush, and we're just going to go and hit Option key, reset all the tools. We're going to go up probably about uh, 40. Yeah, about 40. That'll work. You know, and then put down my paintbrush, nice big swath, and we're just going to paint in some detail back down here. And that's about it. But I want to get a little spotty. I learned this from Sam Regal or some French guy. Uh, and it's called dodging and burning. But we're going to go ahead and do the same thing. We're going to go new brush, reset, and we're just going to take it the opposite way. And we're going to go down about 0.22. Same thing. And we're just going to you know, go over here in the center, put it in the corners where it should be. I just want a little bit more detail right there. And once that's done, that's what I kind of saw, and that's what I kind of liked. So that's what I was shooting for, and I got it back. Uh, so as you see, here's the after, and that's before. It's amazing what RAW will do. It'll save any image, and it's a lot better than what you can do shooting JPEG. 
Well, hopefully that video is very informative for you and why RAW is such a powerful tool in JPEG is pretty much you shot, you what you get. So there's no fixing it. You can do a little bit of fixing in JPEG, but not as much as you can in RAW. Um, RAW will let you fix mistakes that you do in camera, like accidentally underexpose it a lot like I did, and also change it to whatever you want it to look like. If you want to make a sunset out of something that wasn't there, you could probably do that in RAW. Besides that, if you like the video, go ahead and like it, share it, help me out by subscribing to the channel, and I'll show you more videos down the line of what, what I do in photography and the tricks and tr tips I use. Besides that, I'm Heath Smith, and you're watching Heath Smith's Photography. Thanks. Bye.